initial video, I mostly talked about The Shape of Water being a Hellboy spinoff or a creature from the Black Lagoon sequel. There were all kinds of other ideas being presented, and I love seeing those intelligent discussions taking place in my comments. So here are some of those theories. Many of you were reminded of H.P. Lovecraft's creation, The Deep Ones, from Dagon and Shadow Over Innsmouth. I'm not much of a Lovecraft expert, so I looked it up on H.P. Lovecraft Wiki, which basically said that they're ocean-dwelling humanoid fish people with an affinity for mating with humans. Some of their physical traits include small ears, glassy bulging eyes, hairless heads, webbed fingers, folds on the neck, which become gills, and rigid scales on the back. Knowing that, I'd say there's a very good chance that Del Toro was inspired by Lovecraft on this one, but the question becomes, was he inspired directly? There's been a bit of controversy about The Shape of Water in the indie film world because of how similar the movie seems to be to this 2015 short film, The Space Between Us, with many of you making accusations of plagiarism, saying he took the concept, the themes, and the look directly from The Space Between Us. So I watched the short film, which is written and directed by Dutch filmmaker Mark S. Nolkemper, and I have to say, if this is plagiarism, they did and try to hide it. The main character is a cleaning lady at some kind of secret lab facility. The space between us is about a post-war era where oxygen is scarce and people want gills so they can take advantage of the oxygen underwater. So these scientists are developing this fish person so they can give its gills to their leader, or whoever this person is. I need its gills tonight. Whereas in The Shape of Water, scientists are developing the fish man as some sort of weapon for the Cold War. The place where the subjects are stored is a high security area. They are stored in these vertical water tanks with glass windows, and the people in charge seem to have sinister plans for their specimen. The fishmen themselves are black and blue humanoid creatures. The one in the shape of water has webbed feet, while this one has a more traditional mermaid tail. They don't like being locked up, and the main girl sets them free and sneaks them out of the facility. The cinematography is similar, the sound design is similar from what we can tell so far, even some of the shots seem to be almost identical. So, did Guillermo del Toro rip off this film? Maybe, but I don't think there's enough information to convict him. Del Toro claims to have been developing the film since 2011, which means nothing. I mean, he could be trying to cover up his plagiarism with that statement, but it does take at least a couple of years to develop a complex feature film like this. The Space Between Us was successfully crowdfunded in August 2015, but was first announced in late 2014. The strange thing is, while the indie film community has raised this issue, the director, Mark Nolkemper, has been silent on it. He doesn't exactly have much social media presence, but they do have a website and Facebook page for the film, and the similarities to The Shape of Water have not been brought up. There haven't been any writing credits signaling that The Shape of Water is based on the space between us. The only person from either film who has even acknowledged this is the production designer from the indie film, who just says that Del Toro's picture seems to be inspired by their short. He doesn't seem mad about it even, just kind of proud of it I guess? There could also be a contract going on behind the scenes, so until the director comes out and cries foul, I don't see how I can get too upset about it. Definitely suspicious how similar these films are though. But there's one more possible connection. I was skeptical about it at first, but the commenters have raised some good points. I asked in the previous video about the significance of the shoes that they keep putting emphasis on in the trailer, and some of you thought it might be a reference to The Little Mermaid, only the roles would be reversed to where the male is the fish person instead. In the trailer, she's referred to as the princess without a voice, just as Ariel gives up her voice in The Little Mermaid to go on land. The significance of her giving up her shoes could also be her giving up her former life on land to go be with the fish person under water. James Hesket points out that her shoe falls off during the scene where she kisses or dreams of kissing the fish man, representing her letting go of her ties to her life on land to find her love below the surface. Skylar has another idea about the shoe symbol, explaining that the zodiac sign Pisces is the sign of the fish. Pisces rules the feet, so shoes will probably symbolically tie into that. Pisces is also known as being a sign of dreams and escapism, among other things. He wasn't the only one to point out instances of symbolism that I missed in the trailer. Brendan Ramos suggested the fact that she's a cleaning lady could have something to do with her clearing the evidence after she steals and hides the specimen later in the film. Maybe some of the evidence she cleans up could be this blood handprint on the theater. I talked about this possibly being from the creature attacking someone and getting blood on his hands, but it's also been suggested that it could come from Shannon, since we see his hand wrapped up in another shot. I still think it's more likely a handprint from the creature, since it is stated that he's a dangerous animal, but that's really just my gut feeling. 
I also talked about the bathtub full of Aviax, but Mitchell Baldwin points out that there's a strange substance in the tub floating around, and the same can be seen in the creature's tank at the lab. My guess is that it's some kind of solution that helps the creature in some way, so when Eliza sneaks the creature out of the lab, she also steals that solution, so the fish man can survive in her tub until she figures out a better solution for him. There were a couple things I got wrong in my other video, like when I said this could be a tentacle of some kind. Looking at the other shots in the sequence, it makes more sense that this is just a curtain or blanket in the room. I also said that the voice could be Doug Jones, but I wasn't really sure. If I told you about her, the princess without voice. It seems that it's actually Richard Jenkins, who may play a father figure to Eliza. And then there's the song, which I brought up as something in the style of classical music, which was another piece of evidence towards this fishman being related to Ape Sapien. I'll touch more on that later. But what I had said was that this movie was pulling a Baz Luhrmann because the recording was actually released in 06. What I didn't realize was that this version was actually a cover. The song has been covered forever throughout history, so it actually fits just fine in a historical context. I predicted that some of the scenes in the trailer may actually be dreams, and this girl took it a step further by saying that if the subject does really have these psychic abilities, he may be the one causing Eliza to have these dreams with his powers. And speaking of powers, many of you brought up this scene in the trailer where Eliza looks to be controlling some water droplets on the window. I didn't think much of it before because I assumed she was in the lab, the camera right here is inside of the water tank, and those were just some bubbles that she was pointing to. It wasn't until I saw a comment referring to this as the bus window scene when I noticed that she is, in fact, inside of a vehicle, as evidenced by the reflection of a traffic light. So she is actually controlling these raindrops with some kind of telekinetic power, perhaps something she learned from the creature, and definitely more evidence that a psychic connection does exist in this movie. And with that, it's impossible not to think about Abe Sabian. Let's just for a moment set aside our views on if this creature is related to Hellboy in any way and give him the benefit of the doubt for a moment. There are obviously some differences in the design of Abe Sapien from Hellboy 1 and 2 compared to the shape of water creature, but one person pointed out that this new creature could actually be based on the design from the BPRD Hell on Earth comics, which look much more similar to the shape of water's monster. This guy, on the other hand, mentions the new creature is blue, just like Del Toro. Wow, Pit Sniper, you know, I never noticed this before, but Guillermo actually is blue, isn't he? I'm so glad that you pointed that out. Okay, I'm done. I'm absolutely done. But on a more serious note, maybe this man near the end of the trailer is a recast of Professor Broom. Probably the most popular comment that I got, though, were the comments about Eliza and the Fishman creature being Abe Sapien's parents or grandparents. And I think it's reasonable to say that this creature is of the same species as Abe, but if you look at the timeline of events, there's no way that Abe is their descendant, because Abe had already been discovered about a hundred years before The Shape of Water takes place. Some of you also discussed that Fox Searchlight probably doesn't have the rights to make a new Hellboy movie, and I think this comment perfectly sums up my views on the subject. Referring to an interview with Guillermo years ago, he did state that the fantasy world in his films does loosely have a connection. Legally, he wouldn't be able to make a Hellboy flick, but from an artistic point of view, he could make a movie closely resembling the characters in the Hellboy franchise, as many movies have done and gotten away with. In that scenario, he could, albeit, make every little detail point towards being a prequel without actually saying that it is. As long as they don't explicitly state any names, locations, or details, he could imply a loose connection. If this is the case, that would explain why Guillermo del Toro and Doug Jones have to deny any connection to the Hellboy universe in interviews, especially with a new Hellboy reboot on the horizon. And I think that's as much as we'll see in The Shape of Water. The creature is just another organism from the same species as Abe. The title of the movie is a perfect analogy for the relationship it has to Hellboy. The film is called The Shape of Water. Water molecules are fluid, they don't have any one defined shape. The movie won't be shaped as a Hellboy movie, it won't have any of those characters, names, or plot points. But this will just be its own movie, composed of the familiar materials that make up Abe Sabian. They'll just be taking on a new shape. Scary story narrations are also taking on a new shape in the new true horror game for mobile phones. My friend and fellow narrator Let's Read just launched his game for Android and iOS that lets you choose your own horror adventure. It comes with 10 stories and is totally ad-free. I'll leave a link to the download in the description. 
Next week, The Shape of Water comes out, and you'll definitely want to see my Things You Missed, where I'll be going into detail on it. So remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.